Hello. Um, this is a piece which explores the ways in which I am privileged in this life to inhabit this body. It also looks at the oppressions I am subjected to and my methods of resistance to these oppressions as best I can. It is adapted from the opening of a lecture I presented to first year art students recently at my university on disability and its social construction. So looking at the social model of disability and examining the ways in which people with various impairments are excluded from full participation in our society, such as by designing buildings with stairs and lacking disability access, etc. So it begins with, it is a privilege to be speaking here today to be given the stage, to be invited as someone with academic and insider knowledge of disability, and importantly, its social construction. I trust that as art students, you're all aware of theorists like Foucault, who explore how power shapes us as subjects and how we resist it. This morning, I'm going to examine with you how living within this disabled body is both a privilege and an act of resistance in a society where the disabled body is routinely devalued and pathologised as wrong. But first I want to explore the ways I am privileged in this life. I am privileged to be at university, where too few women with disabilities find their way, and fewer still to the realms of academia. To have found cultural studies as a discipline, and this unit which includes and explores disability from a social constructionist perspective, allowing us to explore and examine the need for social changes in how we view the non-normative body and how we construct society. My very ability to speak is a position of privilege. I have a voice I can use and a body whose movements as I grow older I feel increasingly at home within. I am very privileged compared to other women with disabilities. Not to be living in poverty, to be free from forms of violence and forms of racism, to own my own home, to have no children yet who can be taken from my care, as a third of our children routinely still are. I am privileged that my body's requirements, its daily routines are not regulated by service providers whose schedules do not take into account the late night as I still want to pull, sometimes with lovers. I am very privileged to come from a family and to have found friends who encourage and find joy in my difference and the perspectives I bring, the knowledge I hold. I am privileged. But in acknowledging my privilege, in owning what power I do carry within me, within this body, I am routinely disempowered and disabled by a society which views my non-normative body as less than the ideal, less than the so-called normal, and has designed the built environment in ways which structurally exclude me I am stereotyped as that brave little young thing who brought tears to the eyes of the lady as I reached for the tofu and Woolies the other week. Yes, it's hard trying to be a vego. To that speed demon who just won't stay off the roads around campus. I keep finding myself in trouble with uni security. One of the downsides of having the uni on a hill, I guess. I am stereotyped by the stranger in the street who felt the need to stop me and tell me that if he was me, he'd go home and kill himself right now to the psychiatrist who told me to do the same thing. My being here at all is an act of resistance. In a society filled with the message, better off dead than disabled. I come to you with stories, a body full of stories. Stories of this body framed by a society which views disability as a personal tragedy. Stories I am asked to repeat over and over again when asked what's wrong with you. I bring to you the story of how part of my mind turned off, stopped breathing as my tiny lungs gasped for air not long after birth, and how this changed me, how my emotions, thoughts and muscles are intertwined, where big feelings run down my legs in tremors, how I am full of feeling, full to the brim, unable to hide it, and now unwilling. My, my stories of my body, of how it is to live inside here, to endure experiences of discrimination and oppression, as people view me from the outside and see me as less than, 
in need of pity, in need of help. My stories are rarely given the stage to be heard, drowned out by the narratives of disability as a personal tragedy, disability in need of a cure. It is these stories that we see portrayed in the media, in films, in magazines, so much we may not even be aware we are seeing them over and over and over again. The end. And then I go into um, looking at slides about the media representation of people with disabilities. So for example, the super crip um, trying to overcome their disability by being super fit um, and the search for a cure. Um, and I look at the medical model of disability versus the social model um, and how the social model creates a mind shift, bringing the new perspective of the social construction of disability, um, which has led to the creation of the disability rights movement um, and the need for real social change to occur. And for me particularly, that's been a really big um, shift in how I view myself and my agency in the world and my power. Um, it's enabled me to find other people that have similar thoughts around um, disability as a shared oppression um, and as a need to advocate for social change and better rights and better um, transport and housing and um, yeah, a call for a sexual revolution as well as part of that in fighting for the, um, against the asexualization of people with disabilities and advocating for our sexual rights. Um, yeah, so I mostly focus on the lecture um, in looking at the social model and what that is and how that can revolutionise your view of the non-normative body and um, particularly be a lifesaver for people with disabilities um, in this society um, as it allows us to find agency and find empowerment and find connection to other people. So yeah, that's enough of a rant for me from now. Hope you enjoyed listening. See ya.